welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. What I do know is my hair has gone crazy 80s styly on me today. Probably can't see because of it. Look, look, can you see that cow slip? Just like what? I, I genuinely don't know what my hair is doing today. But whatever it's doing, it seems to be having a party and enjoying itself. Now, hopefully, you're watching me in black and white. Haven't forgotten yet, but there will be a time when I do. Uh, because this is the continuation of my pick series. And I am absolutely delighted that this time the lovely Stacy from Stacy's Makeup Corner is collabing with me. So, assuming you're watching this in black and white right now, if not, aha, welcome to Technicolor. If you want to see exactly what this looks like in a glorious Technicolor. You want to know what the picture is that is our inspiration this time? And you want to find out which palette I used to create this look? Then my darling, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink. Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Am I ski whiffed? Do I look better? I don't know. If I'm on a slant today, I apologise. Is that better? Mm. Uh, anyway, hopefully the intro is in black and white. Fingers crossed, I haven't forgotten yet. Um, this is a continuation of my photo inspiration series, as I'm sure I will have said in the intro uh, that I haven't recorded yet. And uh, I'm delighted that I am collabing again with Stacey from Stacey's Makeup Corner. Um, we first collabed with uh, Nona, Anya and myself as the Bitches of Eastwick with Stacey as well, and then um, she was also involved in the collab we did for Nona when her baby Mojo died, the, the beautiful great day. Um, and I said to her, you know, should we, you know, do you fancy doing a photo inspiration? And she, she said, yes, absolutely. She's not been very well recently, which is why it's taken so long since our first collab to get to this stage. But I'm pleased to say she's now on the mend. So, uh, this is the picture that we're going to be using which is just stunning. I'm looking at it on my phone because Magic of the Movies, I haven't edited it in yet. I'm waving at the thin air. Look, Bob Hoskins and Roger Rabbit. I finally remembered. I mentioned that in a previous photo collab and couldn't remember the name of Bob Hoskins. There we go. So, as you can see, this is a stream I'm guessing it's at dusk and the sun's going down because you've got the patch of blue at the top left corner. Then as the sun's going down you're getting the, the pink and the lilac. You've obviously got the, the snow on the trees. Um, and then this deep sort of... On my phone the shadows look like a deep bluey green. They could be black, they could be blue, they could be green. I'm not quite sure but on my phone looks like a deep sort of midnight blue kind of thing um, and I just think it's a stunning picture and thankfully Stacey agreed right now as always this is a teaching channel still I may not go as in depth with my tutorials when I'm doing um, photo inspiration but I do tend to just automatically slip into giving you tips and tricks um, because of my chronic pain, I can't blend very quickly anyway because it sends shooting pain right way up to my shoulder. That, combined with the fact that I want beginners to be able to pick up a brush for the first time ever and be able to keep up with the tutorial, 
means that obviously I go at a slower pace. If this is too slow for you, there is a widget up there that YouTube kindly provide so you can speed me up a bit. I'm not offended if you do that. I very often have to do that to get through all the films that I want to watch in a day because of the well, people I collab with. If they all put a, a film out on the same day, I'm like, I want to watch all of them. Um, so I tend to have to watch them at either one and a half or two speed to be able to get through all the films I want to watch. Right, faces washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Primers today. Um, I went in initially with this MUA Makeup Academy Pro Base Soothe and Cool Primer Stick because I'm having a fibro hot moment. One of the issues with fibro is, or with my fibro, is that I find it difficult to control my temperature, so I'll either be ragingly hot when everybody else is fine or freezing cold when everybody else is like, oh, can we open a window? Today I seem to be raging hot. Great. Uh, but obviously I've gone over that with my usual antiperspirant primer. More details of that, I've got a film linked in my description box. Uh, let's get you zoomed in. Because I do want to just discuss eye shapes. Regular viewers can probably skip through this bit until you see me wave a brush at you with some colour on it. Um, the eye primer that I've used is my usual Crow and Pebble. This is in shade blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for Crow and Pebble, I don't earn from it. Um, this is the best eye primer I've ever used because it goes on dry, it's not sticky, you don't have to set it which means you can blend on it straight away so you don't end up with the issue of lose, having to pay off the choice between being able to blend uh, but losing some colour intensity by setting it first, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, I've actually got deep set eyes, which a lot of people think are hooded eyes, because we get a lot of the same issues. We get transference of colours onto the upper lid. If we're cutting a crease, we have to cut onto the upper lid rather than just through the socket. And when we're using glitters, even with glitter glue, we get a bare patch right through there. Now. I'm going to explain the difference for you between the two types of eye and then I'm going to give you a different workaround for each one so that you can follow any tutorial that you see. When I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed you can see all of my mobile lid. You can't see much of it but you can see it uh, from inner to outer corner both sides so I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if your static upper lid completely covers part or all of this lid right down to the lash line that you have hooded lids. Either a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, I'm going to demo this side because I'm blind in this eye so when I close this eye I can still make sure I'm A on screen and B in focus. If I put this brush handle across the visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much space above it, if not more, that tucks back away. And if I cover the visible static lid and do the same, you can see I've got a bit of lid there that tucks back away as well. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together which gives you the same issue as hooded lids and it's why so many people with deep set eyes, sometimes referred to as double lidded eyes, um, have the issue that they, they think or they are mistakenly informed they have hooded lids. Now, if you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your static lid where you need your new crease to fall. Now, obviously, that will reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so use smaller blending brushes than the person filming, um, and if necessary, I, I normally, unless I'm doing an editorial look, I'll normally leave a bit of a gap between the colours and my brow so that my brow highlight really shows up. You may find if you're really restricted on real estate that you have to go right up to the brow with the colour. That's really not a problem. You do you, your face, your choice. Now, if you have deep set eyes, like I've got, what we have to do, if we're putting a deeper colour through the crease here, every so often stop, 
relax our brows and just make sure that we've brought it up high enough that it can be seen when our eyes are open. So as you can see, two very different workarounds for two very different eye shapes. Now, I am going to start off with a Luxie 205 tapered blending brush, which is a round, loosely packed brush. And I'm going to be using Jeffrey's Jawbreaker. And I'm going to be using shades Bubblegum, Gumdrop. Brain Freeze, Wow, and possibly a little bit of Virgin and maybe a little bit of Lemon Drop, I haven't decided yet. Um, if I do decide to do it a deep enough shade, I'll probably go for this one here which is Delicious. So, I am going to... I'm going to do this. I really don't know, to be honest. I always do this. I, I, unless I'm doing a look inspired by a look I have seen, I don't normally come into things with a set plan of what I'm going to do. Just to make my life a little bit easier. Right. I'm going to start off with a little bit of bubble gum which is the pink. Now these may be slightly brighter than the pastels of the picture, but the only rules with this, in, this, this collaboration is you can only use colours that you see in the picture. So I can't add a green in because there isn't one. I can't add a red in because there isn't one. Um, I can't add a deep purple in because there isn't one. Um, but I don't have to use all the colours, so if I don't want to use a deep and a shade, I don't have to. So, I'm going to start off with this bubble gum. If you are fast forwarding, now's the time to stop and pay attention. Uh, and I'm going to start off tiny little circles here, right on the inner part of my eye. And I'm reversing the direction, sort of going in one direction, going towards the nose and in a different direction to blend back out again. I'm just going to take that about a third of the way across the eye, I suppose. You can see how easily these colours blend straight onto the, the um, eyeshadow base. Um, Chrome Pebble do, I think, six shades at the moment. Uh, they've got the white, the lightest end, and then they've got a chocolate brown and a black at the deepest end. And then they've got three sort of skin tone colours in between. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. I'm just repeating the same thing over here. So, Stacey. She is a, a lovely lass. She really is. If you enjoy watching... Um, my films and Nona's films and Anya's films, you'll love Stacey. She's just, she's a, a real sweetheart. Um, sometimes her her little one will appear in the films with her, which is just adorable. Uh, she's got a fair few films on her channel. Uh, Shop My Stashes and Collabs and palette reviews and stuff so lots and lots of interesting things you can catch up on and watch and she is such a genuinely nice person I mean I'm very lucky in the friends that I've made on YouTube um, I've got some really really lovely genuine individuals I'm just sitting back and checking that I've got about the same shape both sides because unlike James Charles, I don't photoshop anything, I don't use filters unless it's a very obvious snapchat filter with ears and bubbles and whatnot. Um, 
because I want you to be able to recreate the looks that I'm doing. So, just really fluffing the edges of that, just to really soften it up. Right, I've got a clean washcloth here that I'm going to use to clean this brush with. I used to use a colour switch, but I found that was quite harsh on the bristles, especially for natural hair bristles. Um, this is synthetic, this brush, but if you've got natural bristle brushes, please don't use a colour switch because you will wreck them. Right, now I'm going to go into a gumdrop, which is this gorgeous, beautiful lavender lilac. I'm going to pop that in the middle bit here. Oh, I've got such an itchy nose. I'll be glad when uh, the trees have finally finished chucking their leaves down. It's weird, I, I tend to suffer all year round with my hay fever because I get tree and grass pollen that affects me as well. Um, which is really annoying, so. I kind of suffer from March right through to sort of October, November. I mean, my silver birch still hasn't lost all of its leaves yet, and neither has my ornamental cherry tree. So, until they've both shed their leaves, I'm still going to be struggling. Like you can see, I'm holding the brush right at the end because I'm putting as little pressure on as possible. And the reason I do circles is it gently moves the skin on your eyes around so you don't get any bare stripy patches. Now this side I do have trouble because you can see I've got really deep creasing here. That's when my eye was pulled around when I was five years old at the Ophthalmic Hospital and I was trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly. Right, I'm just going to go into a combination of bubble gum and gum drop now just to blend those two shades together nicely. Like like, like, like. Um, I do sometimes struggle here and here with uh, dry patches on my eyes. Um, I get stress eczema and thankfully touching wood. I don't tend to get it on my face, it's normally on my neck and um, my flanks, so to speak. Um, you know, down the side of my ribs and crease of elbows and stuff. And um, although I've got oily combo skin, I do get dry patches on my eyes, which can sometimes make pigments not want to blend very nicely. Um, but because I'm used to my eyes, I can absolutely tell you whether it's the pigment misbehaving or if it's my eyes. And obviously I've used this palette many, many times since it first came out. My conspiracy palette finally arrived. I missed out on the first launch and I was absolutely gutted because it's the first time ever that I've missed out on a Jeffrey launch. And then a mate of mine, Heather, messaged me in a panic on Thursday last week saying, Ange! Ange, Beauty Bay have got some back in, quick! And I'm like, oh my god, I have never, ever, I mean, I'm, when she texted me, I was in an area where I didn't have any signal. And when I got signal and that message popped up, that was it, I stopped the car and I'm like, instantly, oh my god. Rang the husband at work, because hubby said he was going to treat me to them. Um, managed to get both the palettes and five out of the six lippies, so I still need to get, are you filming? But I've got the other five. Um, and it was supposed to be on guaranteed next day delivery. I'm dipping back into bubblegum again just to blend these two together. Um, supposed to be here on Friday, guaranteed next day delivery. And um, I bought myself the pink pig mirror as well, which obviously was a separate order because hubby was paying for the main bulk. Um, and the pink pig mirror, I, I paid to get the pink pig mirror to come next day delivery as well, so they'd arrive at the same time so I could film with them. Um, and the pig mirror arrived, 
and the pallets didn't and the tracking wasn't being updated and I was going absolutely bolo down here I tell you but I'm going to dip into brain freeze which is the beautiful actually this blue is almost the same colour as my um, my kitchen um, and I complained to Beauty Bay and I complained to Hermes for the god goodness you know for all the good that does Hermes are the worst delivery company Hermes I think are worse than Yodel now um, and the tracking hadn't been updated it still just said that they'd received it at the local depot on Thursday of course all over the weekend there was no updates to it Monday, no updates to it. I message Beauty Bay again saying, right, what's going on? Are you going to refund us or what? And uh, they said, oh, we've raised the query with Hermes. We have to let them do their investigation first. And I'm like, this is £153 off of my husband's credit card and you're telling me we've just got to sit and wait? Which, I wasn't very happy at all and um, no updates to it on Monday at all got up this morning with hubby checked at I think I checked at about seven o'clock and all of a sudden they had updated So that it no longer said that they'd had the pallet on Thursday. It said they'd received the pallet on Monday. And I'm like, ooh, does that mean they've discovered it? And does that mean it's coming out today? And sure enough, I got a text at about 10 o'clock saying it was with the courier and it was coming out. And I'm like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Because I'd seen so many horror stories about people that had ordered from Beauty Bay and they hadn't put any sort of bubble wrap or, you know, the paper packaging around it to protect it. And loads of people's palettes were turning up broken. And I'm like, oh, now I've got to pray that it's actually going to... I think the fact that I ordered both palettes and the lipsticks meant they had to use a bigger box. So mine, thankfully, had paper packing in it. And thank the Lord, it turned up in one piece. And of course, I'm, I'm dying to use it, but I have to film this because I need to edit this and get it up for Thursday. Uh, this is currently Tuesday, so... Yeah. The temptation, once I've filmed this, to take all of this off and uh, go straight in with a look with the conspiracy palette, I cannot tell you. Which is a shame because I'm really liking how this look is turning out. As you can see I'm just really softly buffing over where the colours meet. This one I did have a few issues with up here. It's kind of gripped the colour a bit well. So if you if you get that, because, and it's because of a dry patch, not a dodgy mm. pigment, just gently buff over with your finger. And the heat from your finger should help disperse it a bit, like so. Even if you always have cold hands, like me. Cold hands, warm heart. Right things, make you fart. <laughs> Sorry, I have no idea where that came from. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. Right, I'm going to get a much finer brush. This is actually a Morphe M562. It is clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to dip into Delicious, which is that deep navy. And I'm going to very gently, tiny, 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 tiny circles through my crease and I've barely put any pigment on the brush at all because I really want this as like um, 
I don't want it to overtake from the pastels. So I'm just <clears throat> very gently buffing that just to soften the edge a little bit. And again, I'm just sitting back and checking. I need to bring it up a little bit higher there to be seen. Some days with fibro, my um, my upper lid sort of swells a bit. So where I would normally take the colour up to then isn't quite high enough. So I have to take it a bit further like I've just done today. And once you've got that top edge blended out, you can just go through with a very gentle windscreen wiper movement just to fill in the deepest part of the crease, like so. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this side. The difference being, because I can close this eye, because I'm blinding it, you get a better look at actually what I'm doing. So you can see I'm putting barely any pigment on, and just really tiny little circles, really blending that out, softening the edge. That's what I mean about the tiger striping that I get now. Because of my deep creasing there, I do have to stretch my lid out here. Um, and likewise, when I'm doing shimmers, I do have to stretch my lid out. But as you can see, I don't pull it across to my ear. I only take it out as far as I need to and let go as quickly as I can so I don't overstretch it. So again just really softening that upper line there and popping a little bit more on the brush just to do windshield wiper movements just to fill in. I haven't decided yet whether I'm gonna deepen up the outer corner, which is why I've not put anything on there yet. Shall I do all matte or shall I put some, I think I'll put some shimmers on. Why not? Now this is one of the brushes from the Jeffrey Morphe sets, but it's not part of the set, it's one of the additional brushes that they did. Um, and this is the JS24 which is a lip brush but it's great for getting down into this corner here and once I've put the pigment on the brush I'll be wetting it with this Wet n Wild Primer Spray. You can use any spray to wet the brush but for God's sake don't put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. You will end up killing the pigment. I promise you that. Right, I'm dipping into a jewel breaker. Just loading both sides of that brush up. And I'm going to just wet it a bit. Now I always dry this ferrule off by sort of rolling it in my fingers like that. Because you don't want moisture getting down and loosening the glue there. Right, so that you can see what you what I'm doing, I'm going to look down into a little mirror down here. I'm going to go right into the inner corner there, and just pull that pigment along. That's why I put pigment on both sides of the brush, so I haven't got to dip back in again. This obviously is the, the snow. I 
Um, yeah, you can use any. I'm just going to dry this brush off before I go back into the pigment again. You can use any liquid. You can use priming spray like I am. You can use a moisturising spray like Mac Fix Plus or Mary Obdescu. You can use a setting spray. You can use a finishing spray. You can just use clean water in a in an empty spray bottle. Um, all we're doing is moistening the pigment to emphasise the shimmer. And like I said with this one, I do have to stretch the lid out. Otherwise, what happens is the shimmer builds up loosely in those deep creases rather than being blended like they are at the moment. And then as they dry through the day, it ends up sort of cascading down my face and just looks ruddy awful. I do get more fallout with this eye because this lid moves more where it was pulled around significantly more as a child. So clean that off and I'm going to go into Lemon Drop. This is not foiling your shadows by the way, this is just applying them wet. To foil a shadow you have to put loose shadow into a bowl or a dish and mix it with a mixing medium to make it either a paste or a liquid to apply. The number of times I hear even the bigger beauty gurus say oh, I'm just foiling my shadows and I'm like no you're not, you're only applying them wet. So I like to give you the correct terms for things. So just popping the yellow on the outer edge and then I'm just going to slightly drag some of the white across onto the yellow just to blend and soften where the two colours meet. Dry the brush off. Dust away a little bit of fallout. Back into lemon drop to do the other eye. Can't wait to see what Stacey's going to do with this. Um, she's got amazing choice of, of colours and stuff. So it'd be interesting to see which which palettes she goes for and which colours influence her the most from the painting? Um, I mean obviously the, the bright yellow sun had a huge impact for me as you can tell. But so did that sky, the, the sky going from blue to lilac and then to pink as the sun sets. As I said, significantly more fallout this side because the eye is that much looser. Right, I am going to pause you while I go and put some foundation etc on and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, do not fear, I will not be gone at an instant for you. I, however, will see you the very next time that I press the record button. So I'll see you, well, right now. And I am back. I am trying out a new foundation, and I don't know if I like it. I've actually changed the way that I'm doing foundation reviews. Rather than just using them and filming with them the first time I use them, I'm actually going to wear them... Uh, at least five or six different times before I film with them now so that I can give you a better, more rounded opinion. Right, going in with my flat top brush. I'm going to go into... Wow! Wow! And I'm going to take that to about there.
off this brush. Cleaning it off. Then I'm going to go into Virgin. And run that under the first half. Not that you can actually see that much of it because it's pretty much my skin tone. So maybe I'll grab a bit of jewel breaker instead. Seems that neither one wants to show up on me. There we go. I might grab a different brush actually. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it because it's flat top but it's chunky. I'm going to dip into Virgin. And just I think that's a bit better. Hmm. Nice. Now, highlight time. I actually used this pineapple two faced bronzer today called Pineapple Sun. So I'm going to go in with this side for my highlight. This is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay about a decade ago. So I'm going to pop a little, whoa okay that's slightly more gold than I was expecting. So I'm not expecting that much pigment from Too Faced. What are you doing? What are you playing me at? It's okay. Not a mistake, it's a happy little accident. Quoting the wonderful Bob Ross. And then in a corner, bring it along underneath the tear duct, which regular viewers know I love doing. Just to finish the eye look off. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I lob some more highlight all over my Mui face, for those of you not accustomed with the UK slang. Um, pop some lippy on, bung some mascara on, do something with my hair which is having a moment to itself right now. I'll be back with my final look. I am back, my hair's gone nuts, but when is that ever a surprise? Okay, so I use the same highlighter everywhere. Uh, I use the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. That's got a huge wand, if you've got small eyes, don't bother. And I actually went for a little bit of Fenty Glow on the lips. Still can't decide if I like the taste of this. It is a non-gummy gloss, which I like. How very 80s. So, this is my final look inspired by uh, that picture. What do you think? How have I done? You like? You not like? Mm -hmm. To quote, Teresa is dead. I want to look like a glowing alien slut. <laughs> right, okay. Um, if you're one of my 4F babies, please check you are still subscribed because every time I put up a new video, some of my older subscribers seem to be getting unsubscribed. Um, I lost three last week. They didn't come back for ten days. Um, I still keep getting people saying, but you're still in my news feed, but I was unsubscribed, so I didn't realise I'd been unsubscribed because your videos were still popping up, so 
Uh, even if I, you are still seeing me, please just double check you are still subscribed. Uh, and once you've done that and left your comment on how well or otherwise you think I have done, I'm going to need you to go over and check out the beautiful Stacey and see exactly what look she has done based on this picture. And as always, be a good YouTuber to her, subscribe if you like her channel, I don't think there's any reason why you wouldn't if you like mine, you like hers. Uh, give her a like, give her a comment, let her know you're one of the 4F family because let's face it, the 4F family is one of the nicest ones on YouTube. Ever. If however you are here from Stacey's channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this waffling. Uh, if you made it this far through the film, I'm guessing you must have enjoyed a little bit. If you too would love to join in the friendliest community on YouTube, then feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn it from red to grey. And then however many hoops YouTube want you to jump through nowadays in order to get notifications of my new films, because gone are the days we could just like a channel and be told when they upload something, because that would be helpful, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Right, my darlings, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, my darlings, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.